G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. Ever heard the expression, Houston, we have a problem? Well, YouTube, we have a problem. Three days ago, I went to one of my favourite movies and clicked onto the channel of the person who posted the movie so that I could then click onto their video scroll so that I could then go 20 or 30 movies back along their video scroll because they were having a bit of a prolific phase and I wanted to look at a movie they'd posted only a week earlier but 30 or 40 movies back and I discovered that I wasn't able to get back beyond the front page of their video scroll. I could only look at their top 10 uploads. That was irritating. Yesterday I discovered that uh, anywhere that I go on YouTube, the movie title page that I am faced with says it has no related videos. Now once upon a time, Google's search engine was pretty good. You know, if I put up a movie talking about sunfoils and the solar thermal ramjet effect and low speed aerodynamics, had that in the title, their search engine would scroll through everything and they'd find some other movie that had those words in the title and it would come up in the related videos. So you'd see my movie and then you'd see a couple by NASA and one by MIT and you know somebody else talking about scramjets. Because I was the only person on the planet who was building electric solar thermal ramjets. It was pretty good, you know, and, and there was a thing called a friends activity scroll and you could, you could look and see what all of the people who had befriended your channel were watching. And if they were watching something that looked interesting, you might have a look at that. And that w was as well as the subscribers activity scroll so I could see what had been uploaded by the people that I am subscribed to. And there was a personal message system which meant that if somebody sent me a personal message, not only could I reply to them, as long as I didn't pump out more than 10 personal messages in a day, I could readdress the personal message to any other channel on YouTube. And I could attach one of my movies to the personal message I was sending off to somebody that I'd never spoken to before. So I had pretty good connectivity. And after, oh that's another thing, when I first got on YouTube, if I made a comment, because I don't have a reply button on the mobile phone, I operate from a mobile phone because I haven't got a computer, I haven't got a computer because back in 1977 I decided computers were a complicated machine that might send clever people stupid. A lot of people would say I'm crazy, but you know, I made that decision at the Lucas Heights High Far Nuclear Reactor on the outskirts of Sydney. And I made that decision because there are all these really clever people who'd built themselves a nuclear reactor that couldn't pump its own coolant water and get rid of its waste heat by a thermosiphon. And you know I have a solar thermal ramjet with a thermosiphon on the roof of my car so even when I was 17 I, I knew about thermosiphons and it's a great way to get rid of waste heat if you've got any fluid that you can use as a coolant. The fluid touches the heat source, the fluid gets hot, it becomes less dense and, and in a 1G field it rises and then it sucks fresh cold dense coolant in underneath it so it pumps. Yeah so I decided the people with the big, biggest computer in Australia at the time who had no thermosiphon for their nuclear power station, well it wasn't a power station it was a research reactor and they they didn't even have thermosiphon tubes and a cold and a hot water manifold for the used fuel rods. And for 30 odd years I used to talk about this and people looked at me as if I was a nut. You know, why would you want to do that? You know, what's wrong with having coal fired electricity to run the electric motor to drive the pump to push the coolant through your power station, through your reactor or past your fuel rods? Well, in Japan they had a thing called an earthquake and then they had a thing called a tsunami. And then they had a thing called four core meltdowns in their nuclear power station because the electricity failed to the water pumps because they didn't have thermosiphons. So 30 years down the track, 
the observation I made when I was 16 or 17 turns out to be right. They were stupid. And why were they so stupid? Because they were bedazzled by how clever their bloody computer was. There's a feedback loop, you know, they're so bedazzled by the cleverness of the computer that they let themselves get sucked into doing some really stupid shit. So therefore, I've avoided computers. I've never had one. I've never learnt to use one. It was a really big step when my daughter bookmarked a YouTube channel onto my mobile phone and she set Daddy loose and there's now a thousand and twenty nine movies up there and this will be one thousand and thirty. But anyway, yeah. Slowly, progressively, they've taken things away. Um, they've buggered around with the search engine's algorithms. So now, most of the time, my movies are related to other movies that I've put up. Very rare that I, you know, score a movie that stays related to other people's movies that are actually rising. Had one last week when I, I made a movie about Anonymous and Campbell Newman, and it went, you know, broom. You know, three days or something have got 800 views and all of a sudden no related videos and it stalls. So people have said that YouTube doesn't care about the small operators and they're trying to get rid of them. People have said that they're trying to force you to get into this Google Plus business. Well, yesterday no related videos. Today I was making a comment on a thread under a movie called House of Commons Toilet Paper by at Laura Leela. Hi, Kathy. And you know, I'd made a comment. Kathy replied to me. I tried to reply to her reply. I used one character too many. I got the red, oops, too many. You know, your comment was too long. Please try again. I went to try again, and there's no post comment button on the thread anymore. Not only on that thread, not only on her channel, all my subscriptions. None of their movies have post comment buttons on the thread, as seen from either one of my two different brands of mobile phone. You know, I've got an Optus and a Telstra. They're both old Nokia phones with buttons, they're not iPhones. So that may have something to do with it, but it was foretold to me a month or so ago that you know once you get past November you have to be linked to Google Plus, otherwise you can't you won't be able to comment. Well, yeah, that happened to me today. And because I have no computer skills, no computer, I don't do anything online except YouTube. So there's nothing I can link my YouTube account to. I haven't got a Google Plus account. And I'm pretty sure that if I go, well, I'm going to get my daughter to have a look and see if she can set me up a Google Plus account and link my YouTube channel to it just to see if it works. But then because there won't be any other activity on that Google Plus account, they'll probably have a program bit of software somewhere that says, oh, this is a soccer account, close it down, nobody's using it. The other big reason, apart from my phobia of computers and general techno-luddism, is that it takes half an amp out of my pyramid full of batteries that runs the inverter that feeds the house with 240 volt current to run the battery charger to run the mobile phone. Right? So if I'm on the mobile phone on YouTube for 16 hours a day and that's been known to happen. I got on here to promote Sunfoils. I was quite seriously into it for a long time. I've you know backed off I'm probably only on YouTube for 12 hours a day these days but for a while it was 16. 16 hours a day was 8 amp hours out of my battery bank. Running the same inverter to run the power pack for my daughter's Hewlett Packard laptop that she had, it was six amps out of the battery bank. It's 12 times more power. Now I haven't got the size solar system that'll give me 98 amp hours at 12 volts, which is it's pretty much a kilowatt hour per day. To run a laptop. You'd be looking at about the same to try and run a desktop, maybe more. I'm not going to go and spend, you know, ten or twelve thousand dollars on batteries and solar panels just to feed a YouTube habit. 
if I can't get a Google Plus account to link to the phone so that it works, then I'm effectively off YouTube. I can't comment on my own movies. At the moment, I can upload and I can edit and I can title and tag. But I can't answer comments with the clip description. You know, it's, fees it's, it's theoretically possible, but it's just way too clunky. So, unless I want to be the sort of YouTube channel that pumps out movies and never answers comments, in which case... I'm assuming the vast number of my subscribers would lose interest, you know, like a lot of people sort of follow me because I have a an idiosyncratic eccentric style on the comment threads. If I'm off the comment threads, you know, who the fuck's going to watch my movies made with a two megapixel mobile phone? You know, it's not great cinematography. You're either here for the ideas or you like the repartee. Um, so, it was foretold within the prophecy by a lot of my friends, you know, VB Ed said it was going to happen with the comments. Um, Laura Leela tried very hard to, to organise some way that people could stay on YouTube without getting into Google+, Plus. but I think she decided that finally you had to go to Google+, Plus or not do YouTube. Conference report, Fred, who I haven't seen appear in the in the activity scroll for a while. I'm wondering whether Fred's still posting. He um, organised some friends to cook up a way to have video responses when YouTube deleted that facility. But I think YouTube's basically trying very hard not to be YouTube anymore. And, yeah, if I can't comment, I don't know whether I want to stay... Making, making movies. I think my Spielberg phase may have just got squelched today. Um, so in the interest of accuracy, I did zero to accurise my view count today. I Because uh, I discovered months and months ago that if I make a movie that's politically hot, the soundtrack, as it's uploading, trips the secret squirrel programs. And when they send a copy instantly to the secret squirrel brigade, it double clicks my view counter. So two months ago, over 100 movies worth of uploads claimed, 17 of them got deleted when I uploaded a movie and then deleted it. So 947, no, 948 minus 1 equaled 931. 17% of my movies were considered subversive enough to double count. Two months down the track and I'd put up a Further 118 movies, I did the trick again, and uh, 20 of the 118 were double clicks, 16.98%. So my subversion is a constant, and uh, yeah, I've enjoyed being a, a hillbilly hermit with a global megaphone via YouTube's mobile phone service, but I think they've just plugged my yap. Um, who knows, maybe I'll put up a movie every week or so just to let the diehards know that I'm still here and the kangaroos are still around. But, see, I, I can't shoot 15 clips over five days and then stick them together and make it a weekly vlog like other people do because I edit on the pause button. You know, it's, it's shoot in sequence, old-fashioned cinematographic skills, I guess. So yeah, so long it's been nice, been nice to know you, um, and I think this is the swan song. Goo Goyle has finally got rid of warbles on a lot, apparently. We'll see, I may be able to hang in there for a while if I can get a, U, a Goo Goyle Plus account, but... Pain in the ass. Pain in the ass, like I say, change is always bad. Change is always bad when it's imposed top down by the bureaucrats. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Bye. Ciao.